Right, well, I'll start, I'll start with the, um, the acoustic kick. Uh, even though <laughs> It's a bit counterintuitive because I have the samples on top, and maybe some people do start with samples, I don't know. Um, uh, I'll start with these. Um, so, i just get the kick up. Have a listen to it. R really crank the speakers. We can't get it too loud in here um, for whatever reason. But uh, I like to get it quite loud so that I can see what it's doing to the speaker because that's pretty important because you can obviously you, you're hearing stuff. But if the speaker's going nuts and you're not hearing that much low end, it means there's a lot of misinformation in the kick. Do you ever get that when you kind of like? So yeah, I like to have a quick crank of it and kind of enjoy it and you see what it's physically doing to the speaker yeah because it's, it's good yeah it's good to see what it's actually doing um and i would probably have a quick listen to the kick out as well you know like just it and the speakers aren't doing anything nuts so i've got a bit of a weird workflow with acoustic drums now i don't know if it is weird it's just what i ended up doing on this and i've, I've been doing it for a, a little bit uh, so, I'll just put a gate on there for the time being, but we'll bypass it. All right, so I like to just limit it just a little bit so that it, it's just holding it in place a little bit. So, uh, just give me a sec. So. so, no more than that, just a little bit. So we've got, if you just look at the, the, the meter. Perfect timing, Jace. Just holding it in place. Now, maybe it's psychoacoustic and maybe it's just the way that I'm thinking, but it just evens it up a little bit. Yeah, so uh, gently kissing it, basically. Yeah, if you want to put it like that, dude, that's <laughs> gently kissing my kick drum. <laughs> Super weird. <laughs> okay, so uh, do that and, you know, the, the general kind of EQ, there doesn't sound like there's a lot of problems with the kick drum, but there's some parts of it that I'd want to enhance. But there is definitely a bit of bleed, so I'm going to gate it. So. I mean, like something like that, but I'm not definitely not going to take all the bleed out. We're going to put some of that back in because if, if I find if you take it all out, you get this weird unnatural sound. So let's put a bit of bleed back in. I said I wasn't going to take it all out, but it sounds pretty good with about 18 dBs of it taken out, which is most of it. So I just don't want to take it all out. So cool. Cleaned it up a little bit, I guess. Um, so the reason that I've done, I've limited it a little bit, and obviously limiting it is going to take some of the fronts out, right? So it, it is going to kind of, you know, not make it, you know, if we did a lot of limiting, this would happen. the fronts off so we don't want to do that so let's definitely undo what we just did there um, but it does take a little bit of that off but what I want to do is, is give a little bit of that back by compressing it and using the attack of the compressor to give it a bit more front so Got it. Um, and again you know I'm going to say this a billion times while we're doing this but this is not the right nor the wrong way to do anything it's this is just it's jazz mixing Jazz mixing heavy metal. See how immediately we've got more front on the kick now, even though we took a little bit off with the limiter. And then it, what do you mean by front? Uh, transient. Oh, okay. Got front it. of the sample. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna have a muck about with this compressor for a second. So, so you're so ba you're trying. I've just never heard of transients uh, referred to as front, but that makes sense. So you're trying to restore transient that may have gotten maybe compromised a little bit yeah the yeah exactly Got it. yeah that kind of thing um but obviously the the compressor is also going to give you more of a constant volume level mm -hmm. and a little bit of a sonic kind of jazz um 
especially if you had that on. Ah, let's turn that off. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's something like that. Well, you'll probably have noticed that I have not filtered this kick drum yet. Um, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to filter the kick or the kick out or any of the samples because they're in phase with each other currently. Mm -hmm. And if I start filtering the low end, then the phase is just going to go all whappy. So I'm going to like do something at the end of the, everything to filter the low end out. The, yeah. You know, the misinformation, because yeah, you know, there's, there's going to be some there, even though the speakers aren't being baggy. But if I start to, I, I wonder if I can give so you. I guess it, it needs to be reiterated that in order to even be able to approach it that way, it's got to sound good to you in the first place and they need to play nicely together so that you don't have to do a crazy amount of corrective work yeah. on the tracks. Yeah, so. that kind of thing. So, um, Cool. Right, I'm just going to get a bit more volume on this so I can see what he's doing. Ooh, what's that? A bit of jazz. Okay, I've got a few notes here that I'm just going to refer to of what I actually did so I don't go too off piste. And also, I've got the track that I can A B to. Uh, cool. Okay, what did I do? Okay, yeah, that makes sense. The sample has, uh, the Easy Drum sample has tons of low end in, and so does the kick out. So I'm going to take some tubbiness, like you know, some of the some of that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> so I'm gonna take some of that out. So I'm I'm just gonna take like a little bit. Of, I'll. Ah, uh, you will have heard that. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of that guy out. Okay, and similarly, you know, there's there's. Can you hear that chirp that's in there? There's like a. Almost sounds like microphonic feedback. So we're going to bin a bit of that out as well. Don't like that. And maybe, did I take any mid out of it? No, I didn't take any mid out of it. What did I do? Oh, I see what I did. Okay, cool. Yeah. There's a. Let's have a look here. There's, there's a, you know, if you, if, you put 18, if you put 18 dB of that, or any of this shit in, it's going to sound terrible. Let's have a quick look. That's particularly disgusting, so let's get rid of that. controlled. Um, okay, cool. That'll do for the time being. And it's funny, you know, kind of when you mix uh, at home, I don't know if anybody else does this, but let's get one of these SSLs in. There's a lot of plugins. Um, I recently uh, got all the Waves plugins, so I need to do a bit of a tidy up of this. What were you saying about when you mix at home? Oh, yeah. Um, so... When, I'm going to use the legacy one because I use that one on the actual mix. Uh, so when you're mixing like a Hummer in studio or whatever, um, sometimes you might find that you take a little bit out, at maybe, I don't know, let's say that you took some 2.9 nonsense out and then later on down the line you want to harden the whole thing up but you put a wider Q version of like 3K in but at least you're kind of taking that bit out. And, it, you know, when you start looking back at a mix that you've already done, you end up kind of thinking, what the hell was I doing? And it looks a bit nuts. So if any of that happens, you know, that's how it just happened, I guess. It's just one of those things. 